What you are about to see is the greatest piece of technology that I have ever bought. The chances are if you're watching this, you're interested in getting one of your own or just wanting to see what this machine can do. This is the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro 2021. this machine for around a month now and I've been coming from a 2015 base model MacBook Pro which for the last two years has really slowed me down in terms of creativity in my workflow. This became really unusable for editing work and anything more than emails and basic admin work. I decided to switch to Windows and my custom built PC for work and some gaming and I knew that I had to upgrade but I didn't believe in the Intel MacBook Pros I wanted to wait for them to bring out a MacBook Pro with all the ports with a better M1 chip and something that is just a fresh redesign from the previous versions. I've always preferred macOS and I missed it when I switched to Windows, but I soon realized how great macOS can be when you've got the best MacBook available powering it. Now, I'm a videographer. I shoot videos daily. If I'm not filming, I'm probably editing. Everything from copying 4K 10-bit color video files to RAWs and everything in between is ultra fast thanks to the SSD that can pull 7.6 gigabytes per second in read speed. What does that mean? In reality, it means copying videos and photo files for pros like me and other photographers, videographers, editors is quicker than ever before, twice as fast as the last year's M1 MacBook Pro. It's also worth noting that most Adobe apps are M1 Pro optimized. Premiere, Lightroom, Photoshop, and a few of the others like InDesign, Audition are already M1 optimized. And as of recording, After Effects is still in beta, but it performs just as well, if not better than my PC equivalent. When it comes to Premiere, everything from playing back multiple streams of 4K video, hundreds of raw files and time-lapse videos, and the After Effects ProRes animations, everything is buttery smooth, if not smoother than my custom-built PC, which has a Ryzen 3800X CPU and a 2060 Super NVIDIA GPU. To compare my PC and my new MacBook Pro, I did a quick render test, a three minute 4K video. This was an MP4 video. It was just for a real estate client that I did a few weeks ago. The custom built PC came in at three minutes and 22 seconds, whilst the MacBook Pro was a little bit slower at three minutes and 52 seconds. Now the MacBook was slower by 30 seconds. If you think of how much work it is to export a video, my custom built PC should be beating this. And remember, the MacBook Pro is portable. My PC is not portable. Well not very easily anyway. However, if you're wanting to export Apple ProRes, this is where it gets crazy. I had a one minute ProRes 4444 After Effects animation. On my PC, it took one minute and 35 seconds. But on my MacBook Pro, you guessed it, it took 53 seconds. The M1 Pro and Max have their own ProRes encoders built in to the system, whereas my AMD 3800X CPU and 2060 Super GPU do not. Just make sure you have hardware encoding enabled in the export window in Premiere and you'll be good to go. In short, this M1 Pro is an absolute beast when it comes to video editing and rendering, and I haven't even really scratched the surface of what its limits are. I also produce music under my alias Vecan. Now for all you music producers out there, you'll be very happy to hear Logic Pro runs like a dream. This is the same for all apps by Apple. They run insanely smooth, noticeably much more than their Intel versions. Although Logic users do double check that you're using all 10 of your CPU cores, because I wasn't by default. Mine was actually only using four cores and I had a system overload when I first tried to play back my projects. I haven't had a single system overload since then, and I'm only using around 20% CPU with about 100 tracks with plugins, VSTs, etc. So that is crazy. A lot of the reviews have been saying the same thing about the MacBook size and how it is too bulky. It's actually the same size as my 2015 13-inch MacBook Pro and a little bit thinner, 0.3 centimeters thinner. If you come from a newer Intel Mac, you might notice a slightly thicker body, but if it's on a desk most of the time, who cares? To me, how thin a MacBook is doesn't actually matter. I wouldn't mind if this was even thicker, if that meant we could get a slightly bigger battery, more features inside, I don't really mind. As long as it does the job that I want it to, 
everything else fits around that. The 14 inch also seems like the perfect size for me. I always felt like the 15 or the 16 inch were probably too vast for what I wanted to use it for. So the 14 inch is perfectly fine. I'm also plugged into an external monitor most of the time. You will also instantly forget about the notch. Just like your iPhone, you won't notice the notch when you're in full screen mode because the entire top menu bar goes blacked out. You can change this in the settings if you want, but to be honest, I look at it as if you've gained screen area at the top of the screen rather than losing that little bit where the notch is. The rest of the insanely bright, buttery smooth 120 hz ProMotion display will take your mind off that tiny area of the notch at the top. Apple call it the camera housing. I've got that down in my notes. Apparently it's camera housing, but literally every single person is calling it a notch. Elsewhere, there's an actual working keyboard, which is very similar to the Magic Keyboard found in Max. The Butterfly keyboard users will definitely be pleased to hear that the dreaded touch bar, which all of my friends have told me was more of a pain than a useful feature, has now gone. The trackpad is also noticeably larger. This is something that I noticed straight away when getting it out of the box. It was much larger and it felt a lot more usable than my 2015 MacBook Pro trackpad. It's definitely the best trackpad I've ever used in a laptop. The speakers are also simply insane. In my personal opinion, they're a little bit too colored in the low to mid range area, but they are simply insane. I wish there was a little bit more high end on these speakers, but overall, they are perfectly good for using on a day to day basis. Overall, very impressive. And spatial audio, wow. That was one of the features that absolutely blew my mind. Trust me, when you get one of these, put them on a desk, go into Apple Music, turn on spatial audio and hit play and you'll be amazed at what spatial audio can do. To me, it doesn't actually matter that much because again, I'm plugged into my external monitors through an interface, so I don't actually need to use my speakers in the MacBook Pro, but it's nice if you want to use them that way. Also, the camera and the notch is now 1080p and not 720p. I still find it hard to believe that in 2020, there was a 720p camera being shipped in a thousand fifteen hundred dollar computer we've moved on from 720p. The mic inside the MacBook is also very clean and some people online have been posting videos of them recording vocals for their music tracks inside this computer straight out the box using the mic inside the MacBook. I'm not sure I go that far as to using it for a final mix, but for ideas and rough notes, this is perfectly usable. It's more than good enough for Zoom calls and meetings and things like that. And I actually tested it out when I was invited onto BBC Radio a few weeks ago. Oh, George, mate, you can make music in an half, can't you? It's definitely better than what I first made, let me tell you that. <laughs> oh, mate, I, would I love, wouldn't want to play you it now. I would love to hear your first Logic project in, in contrast to that. He really wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you really wouldn't, dude. Fast charging with a 96 watt MagSafe USB charger is really nice. The magnets in this new MagSafe 2 are much stronger than MagSafe 1. So, in summary, here are my pros and cons. The pros, we have an amazing display. Yes, it has the notch, but it's extremely bright. 120 Hertz, 14 inch edge to edge display. Performance is out of this world. I think of the performance as if I've got my PC performance bolts down into a tiny compact machine in a version of a laptop. That to me is unbelievable. Ports, we now have SD card ports, HDMI ports, USB-C ports, MagSafe, and a high impedance headphone jack. This is important if you're a music producer and you have a very high impedance set of headphones. You can just plug them straight in, no need for a preamp or an external interface. You can just shove them straight into the laptop and you're good to go. Mac OS Monterey is the best Mac OS experience I have ever had. The build quality is superb. The squared off design is much more nicer to look at, much more nicer to carry and hold. It's just better across the board. And fast charging, of course, can juice up your MacBook in no time. The cons for me are the battery life. For me, under intense load, I was only getting about three to four hours with After Effects, Premiere, Photoshop, and Lightroom intensive work, including renders. I usually got seven to eight hours on a normal charge when I wasn't using intensive apps like this, just light web browsing, emails and admin, that sort of thing. Another con is that it's very pricey, but again, it's targeted at pros and they were more willing to invest in their equipment. And the last con I have are some apps are not M1 optimized and this did cause me a few problems, especially with some plugins in Logic. I did get to fix them, but it was a little bit of a pain to go back and forth with the support of different companies that have still yet to update to M1. Most professional apps are M1 optimized. Some aren't. Discord is tragically slow. WhatsApp in Rosetta is okay. It runs just like the Intel version, but those two I would like to see updated to M1 in the near future. And so in summary, this is the MacBook that pro users have been waiting for since 2015. Filmmakers, 
photographers, music producers, designers, freelancers. I can safely say that this machine will be my main workhorse for probably the next four, five, six, possibly even more years. Having said that, if you're working in apps like Google Drive, Excel, or only doing light work, I would not recommend to get this machine. Get a MacBook Air, M1 MacBook Air, and there might even be a new MacBook Air model coming in 2022. That would be a much better investment for you. You'd save a lot of money and you'd probably get a very close barometer in terms of performance. And if you've just skipped to the end, I'll keep it short. Yes, it's incredibly powerful. Yes, it's very pricey, but this will definitely be the best MacBook Pro that you have ever used in your entire life. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. We'll see you next time. Ciao.